talked about um, <coughs> for this iteration of Lock and Key TV show moving more to fantasy and away from some of the horror elements. What were some of the other takeaways that you brought with you from the previous iterations that really informed this one? I think they were connected. I mean, for instance, in the Hulu version and in the comic, the story starts with the brutal murder of Randall Locke, and it's such a like a it's such a powerful piece of storytelling. But it, in a way, it felt un, it felt overweighted, um, mm -hmm. and that you know when you were we were doing the show, and the show was going to delve into these magical keys and explore the kind of the wonderment of them, and these kids coming of age as they uh, increasingly became responsible for these keys that. Just, we didn't want the audience to like look at this brutal murder of this dad and then go, ah, that show's not for me. That's not the type of show I want to watch. So we, we decided to tell the story in flashbacks. I think it's no less emotionally effective, but I think it does convey that this isn't what the show is. This, sh this is a part of, mm -hmm. of the show. Mm -hmm. And also, in the previous version, there was more of an emphasis, I think because this is what Hulu had <coughs> pushed towards, more of an emphasis on the adult characters. Um, and we certainly tell a lot of stories with our adult characters, but because the kids are the ones that experience the magic, you know, we lean much more into their story. I mean, yes. I mean, actually, you know, not to get too inside baseball, but I, I also think that there was, because there was a Fox started passing this in 2010, and I also think, again, there was this kind of, but do we really want to tell a story about the kids? And the answer is, yes, we do. Yeah. But they, <laughs> that didn't seem to really click early yeah. on. And, yeah. and um, so then, that? I think there's this fear that, tell a story about kids that is naturally exclusive it's exclusionary yeah. and yeah. that only kids are going to watch it but it's just so disproved from everything yes. from E.T. to Frozen <laughs> yes. to Harry Potter I mean Stranger, Stranger Things, things. Stranger which things. specifically like, Stranger Things yeah. jumps to mind yeah and I, you know, <laughs> so I think I think Netflix certainly felt confident that we could tell a story about kids that would be a broad appeal show and that was that was great um, it has been a long journey from Fox to MTV to Hulu to Netflix. Yeah. Um, has since Netflix had redone the whole pilot, were there a few things that you had wished that they kept from the previous? From the version, from the previous versions, that even from the beginning, or how much has it changed? I think this is the story in its best possible. You know, I mean, I think because it has. Because the comic, we had fun doing the comic. Yeah. I mean, the, we we always, I mean, we always had fun doing the comic, and I feel like. Like, this is also the most fun version of the story. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it has an energy and a fizz to it, which is really exciting and compelling and makes you want to keep watching. And, and um, so, I mean, and the other thing is that some, uh, some people have made much about the long process it took to get on Netflix. But I don't know. I mean, I, I have, I've had ideas for stories where I, you know, I took a stab at it, wrote half a novel, and I thought this doesn't work, and I left it. And I took, but my second novel, Horns, there were actually I, that idea developed over eight or nine years, and I had two or three other stabs at it before I finally got it right. And I think you know sometimes it just you just you know the subconscious needs to keep working. It's it's you're turning that pop cultural lock and trying to listen for when it. Boy, that was a lock pun, wasn't it? <laughs> but it is, it is like you're turning a combination lock and you're waiting to hear it click, and everything finally clicked this time out. Yeah, despite of being a continuous process of different attempts, I, I felt like every one of these has been like building a different sculpture in which each of the sculpture has its own qualities and its own beauty, and not because of the arm of this sculpture looks well, you can take it off and put it in the other one because it would not match. I think in a way, all these creators bring to life their own vision of it, and I think they all succeeded in the in the intention that they have with it. And luckily for us, the, the time in which this is coming to screen and it's going to come to life and to be shared with the audience is this iteration of that effort in which I think they really nailed uh, the combination of the vision that they wanted to have and how they accomplished to make the fine with the final uh, with the final work a piece a piece of art. It's like a when I was uh, watching the the show, I kept having in my mind all the interviews that I read in which Carlton and Meredith described what they wanted to do with the show, and they so accomplished with it. So it's great to see that that their vision that was also pushed through a process in which you have the hands of this legion of craftsmen and artists that combine combine their talents to to pull it off. 
that it's great to realize that it came out in the way they wanted to. So I, I'm very proud of the final result. I think it's an incredibly solid piece of fiction and narrative, and I'm really hoping that people are really going to fall in love with it.